Alex here from the Forward National, and after a lot of requests, we're finally going to do a blog about text game and how to make your text game not suck and not go over the top and not be too cute and not be too weird and not completely scare girls away from the weird things that you're texting. I'm here on Four Week Natural in Melbourne and there's a lot of guys doing really bad text game practice and I want to talk to you about that today. So, let's begin. So we continue the blog as a classic Melbourne tram goes past and I'm going to talk to you about a kind of a crash course on how to not mess up your text game. Now on Four Week Natural, which is what I'm doing right now, we've just finished a day game session, is we, we sit down and we do a two hour text game seminar within the first five days of starting. So that way you all, you, the students all know these principles and it, we go in depth of all the points that I'm about to teach you for two hours so that as we roll on for our 33 days on location, my students who are actually here on either side of me, they say, Alex, here's, here's this girl, here's the backstory, here's how I met her, here's what's happened so far, and then I can do the text game with you because I need to know about the student, about the girl, about how you met, about what's going on, about what your kind of game plan is. That's the only real way to coach text game and so many of you guys are so bad at it. I can give you some general principles, um, but you need context in order to be able to review it. So, let me, let me start to give you some of those rules to optimize your text game. So if you're asking, how do I text the girl? Here are the answers. First of all, if you want to text the girl, you need to make the number solid. How do you make the number solid? Is you need to qualify her. You need to tell her what you like about her personality. She's hardworking, she makes a lot of sacrifices, she's ambitious. You need to compliment her personality so that she knows that you're texting because you like her, not because you're just trying to get some action. Girls do like action as well. However, she needs to understand that you like her more than just for action. Secondly, it's really important that you have some kind of connection with her friends, that's important. Thirdly, it's important that you, if you met her in a bar or a party or a nightclub, that you are the guy who actually walks her out of the club, so or bar or party, so that she knows that you're not just going back in there to try to get some action, okay? Uh, other things that make the number solid is, the thing is, if, you're, if, if you get a girl's phone number and it's super clear, as the police and the fire trucks come, and it's super clear that you just want some action, that you just want to date the girl, and, and that's all very predictable, that's going to make the girl a bit defensive. Make sure we're not impeding the street here. That oh, looks all right. You can actually scramble the microphones when the, when the fire trucks come past, so see how we go. Um, so remember, this is the classic phrase that you want to learn from uh, Forby Natural, is that a girl wants to be chosen by a man with choice. So if you get a girl's phone number and she knows that you're going to be texting really quickly, then you don't appear to have choice. She needs to know that she's being chosen, or like she's being chosen by a man with choice, and that she's better relative to other girls. So if you're texting very soon and very eagerly to try to keep that conversation going and try to make something happen, it's going to put her off and it's going to mess up your text game. Basically, to make text game work, you know, getting a number from day game or night game and then uh, bridging to go and meet her again is to kind of play it cool over a longer period of time. So the, the question that students always ask me is when, when should I text the girl? And the technical answer to that, it's kind of a semantically technical answer, is you need to leave long enough for her to know that the other guys in her life suck and you are a good new option. Now, how long might that be? That could be you know, two days, could be three days, could be four days, depending on what time of the weekend it is. But one rule that I tell the guys on the program is never ever send a social text. Logistical texts are fine, but don't send social texts before uh, 2, a, 2 p.m. in the afternoon, okay? Even to me as the coach, like, Alex, da -da -da, I'm stressed out. You don't wanna be sending a text, like meeting a girl at a party or something like that, and then sending a text, <laughs> and then sending a text at 10 a.m. the next morning. You guys, you guys might not realize that, you know, a girl, she may only have a big night out or party night once every two weeks, whereas you're going out three nights a week and she might wake up feeling horrible and just not want the stress or the burden of a guy with expectations. So generally texting the next morning is not a good idea, but it's not too bad to text like the next afternoon or the afternoon afterwards. But Imagine this, you wanna, you know, if you exchange phone numbers with a girl and you've had a really good interaction, you've qualified her, her friends like you, all those things, you want her to think, you know, 36 hours later or a day and a half later, you know, or maybe two days later, that guy, I gave that guy my number, why isn't he texting? I thought that went well. Every guy texts me, 
why isn't that guy texting? So you want to leave enough space. So that can be one day or two days. That's when to text. I think then the next question is going to be what to text. Right. Now, <clears throat> I hate to break it to you, but what I've witnessed when I coach these five-week programs all over the world, and check out the schedule on fourweeknatural.com slash apply now. We've got Melbourne, Croatia, Croatia, Helsinki. We're going to Helsinki, then to New York, then to London, and then we're going to go to somewhere tropical in January. So check it out and join with me. But when I'm coaching these guys, they get a whole lot of numbers on week one, but those numbers generally don't turn out to be anything until like week three. So statistically, what we've observed, and of course we're trying to be as effective as possible because we want to have good interactions, is statistically those numbers normally work out about 10 days later, uh, over the course of two weekends. The girl will be thinking, you know, I don't like the guys in my life, I want to get back in the dating game, I have a, quite a few guys texting me, and if you're still casually texting after a you know, two weekend period, about 10 days, then the girl seems to think, this guy's legitimate, he's not booty calling me, he seems to be genuinely interesting. And the only way that a girl can test you with text game is with patience. She can only test your patience. And it can take quite a lot to integrate a new person into your life, so it can take a lot for the girl. What she wants is a, a fun relationship with no expectation, no burden, uh, something to explore. What you generally want is some instant gratification of proving to yourself that you can, you can get laid. But obviously, that's a massive mismatch, okay? And what you're, if you're operating your game that way just to prove something to yourself and try to get a bit of action, that's not exactly win-win, so you're not supposed to think that way anyway. So, what you need to do is be patient with it, but you can gather a lot of numbers and make a lot of friends, and these numbers tend to come to fruition, they tend to work out in about a week and a half, okay? Sometimes it can be quicker in holiday destinations, never say never, but play a slower, more solid game. With female psychology, we have this concept called the tri-brain conflict, okay? So that is, the girl's mind has one set of desires, the girl's heart has another set of desires, and the girl's uh, passion, her reproductive organs, her genitals, and her sex, they have a different set of desires. So it's a three-way conflict, the mind, the heart, and the, the sex, basically. So the mind, a girl's mind, or even, you know, Female psychology, as we've observed in this dating game, is it's not that they want a boyfriend, it's that they don't want to have a completely lacking dating game. The heart wants to defend against being hurt, and the heart wants to defend against having the burden of a guy falling in love with her, which is just uncomfortable, overwhelming, and nobody wants this, nobody wants a burden. But the girl still does want sex, as all humans do, okay? All humans of all sexualities, ethnicities, for the most part as a, as a grand generalization. So if you're texting a girl and she's having this three-way conflict, the idea of what to text is to actually keep it simple, play it cool, keep it down to earth. So you can go back and forth and basically with what to text, keep her updated with your life. Here's the view from my classroom, here's the view from my office, here's the coffee that I'm having today, I did a bit of shopping, here's the view from my morning jog things like that, keeping her updated, almost like you are a news feed, just like Instagram or Facebook or scrolling on, on a news app. So you're sharing yourself, and the good thing is you can build rapport, build connection, and a sense of connection, even with her, even without her actually doing anything. In the same way that if you see a brand advertised all the time, you can get to know that brand, and that brand kind of gets into your psyche and makes a connection with you, even if you didn't plan for it to. So by you sharing yourself and not asking anything of the girl, not asking questions, then you can kind of get into her mind and start to form a connection. So what to text is, as a general rule of thumb, don't ask questions, as a general rule. So it's better to say, here's what I'm doing, and then here's the big trick. You want to say, I bet you're XYZ. I'm sure you are. XYZ. I imagine you are XYZ. So you, you text away an accusation, assumption, or statement, and then you want to get clarification back. So one, one classic text that I might send is like, this is my, this is my two day hangover routine, and it might be like a coffee and some fruit or something. I bet you're being super lazy on a Monday, or I bet you're hating work on a Monday. And that might be a girl whose phone number I got on a Friday or a Saturday, and then I'll text on a, on a Monday. 
And then when I say, I bet you're being lazy or hating Monday afternoon, she then has to clarify that, okay? So it's super low expectation, super simple. All of my students, and I'm sure you guys are doing this as well, is you're being something called too cute. Okay, let's delve into this before the clock runs out, right? Keep this blog short. Being too cute, it's hard to explain, but that's if you send a text message that is a, it's a lame joke that she has to laugh at. Right, so for example, if you met the girl in McDonald's and you're both lining up for burgers and you do call back humor and you say, hey, it's Monday afternoon, I bet you can't wait to get another burger next Friday night. That is being too cute. It's callback humor. You're trying for rapport. It's a joke that she's supposed to laugh at based on rapport that you established when you had at the time. Don't do that. Don't, don't desperately grasp at rapport. Come over here, camera assistant, otherwise you get hit by a tram. Um, don't grasp for that rapport because she, it's uncomfortable because she's going to have to acknowledge that rapport. You kind of put her into a corner. It's not ideal. It's even better actually to polarize a little bit and say, um, just say, I'm sure you're even more deplorable on a Monday. I'm sure you're, uh, I'm sure you feel haggard on a Monday. I'm sure you're not your most beautiful. Uh, uh, I'm sure you're not feeling 10 out of 10 on a Monday. So you can challenge those things and get the conversation going. Now, another huge concept as a generalization that you can use is only send one or two points per text. All of my students, and I'm sure you guys out there, you analytical dudes out there do this as well, is you send like five or six messages. For example, say, hey Amanda, hope you had a great weekend. Um, here's me having my coffee on a Monday. I'm, I wonder if you got that thing that you wanted on the Sunday. What are you thinking about next weekend? If you want to do something, what's the best time for you? Five things, one, like, five things all in one message. If you got that message from somebody that you barely know, you'd be overwhelmed, you'd be uncomfortable, you wouldn't be interested at all. So make it simple. When you do the assumption, it really elicits a response, right? And then what you want to get into is a back and forth volley where you only make one or two points per text. And as that back and forth volley of you text, she text, you text, she text, some of your texts can be uh, encouraging and complimentary. Like I'm sure you're a, you recovered like a ch champion. Uh, I'm, or you let yourself down last weekend. I'm sure you're going to dominate next weekend. Basic stuff back and forth. And as you get the back and forth going, then the concept that we have to actually asking her out, which is what text game is all about. We have something called a warm invitation. Okay. Now let's get to concluding this here. I want to try to condense your 33 days of coaching and a two and a half hour seminar, which we do on every four week natural. Uh, into a short video here. So warm invitation is as you're texting the girl back and forth and not requiring answers from any texts. You don't want to you don't want to demand an answer from any text. You want to leave it open. So an example of a leaving an open text is um, you know uh, I'm I'm dying at work today. Hope you're surviving. Right? That kind of thing. Or is or you could say something like uh, I'm I'm just running back from the gym right now. Uh, I remember that thing you said on the weekend, uh, I'm, I'm having a good day. So simple and open, touching base, not requiring too much rapport and not putting too much pressure on the girl either. The, the students are evaluating, doing some, some, some approaches nearby me here. And then this concept called a warm approach, okay? A warm invitation. Warm invitation is when you say, hey, you know, maybe you've been texting for five or six days, the next weekend's coming up. A warm invitation is you say something like, hey, by the way, me and my friends are gonna to go to this area on Friday afternoon. What are you and your friends up to? So you're suggesting, you're suggesting the convergence. You're suggesting that you could do a meetup, but she's, she doesn't have to give you a yes or no answer. She can say, oh, that sounds fun, but we do something different. And that's fine because you were gonna go there with your friends anyway, and there's no pressure on her to say yes or no. So many times you guys with your text game, you jump the gun and you think, you think, you know, you got a girl's phone number and you ask her out almost immediately like, hey, do you want to hang out the next day? Hey, do you want to go on a dinner date the next day? It's, it's the wrong way to do it. When you're asking for the first kind of meetup, another thing you can say is like, oh, hey, I just found out that I got Wednesday night off. Uh, I'm, I want to do something. Do you want to do something? So it's kind of like, 
uh, low expectation, it's a little bit spontaneous. Low expectation is the key word. And the first kind of meetup that you want to ask for is either her friends meeting up with your friends, which is more of a safe bet, or do you want to do something casual after work, after school, after college, where generally it's in the daylight hours and it's just like get a drink and have some tapas, get a drink and have some snacks, where it's not like a full commit your entire night to it. You can kind of do it after work um, and it's low expectation, almost a kind of like sizing each other up and you make it casual. One thing to be aware of like when you're asking for the first date is very often you're going to get you're going to get a uh, a knockback or a flake before you actually get the first uh, the first moment that she agrees to talk with you. And I'll, I'll end the, the blog on this note because I've literally laid out probably 15 to 20 points here is that the girl actually has to start to get an impression of you and start to warm up to you for her to fear losing you for her to actually start to get excited about you. So what that means is if you're having a, you know, sending gifts, uh, updating her on your life, accusing her of things, congratulating her of things, uh, you know, imagining the fun that you could have on the weekend, encouraging her of things that she's gonna do on the weekend, and that builds up over the course of usually seven to 10 days. And you know, you're, going, you're giving these warm invitations like, hey, there's a party this weekend, what are you guys doing? Hey, I got the, the day off work, what are you up to? and she kind of declines those things, but you're warming her up, after seven or 10 days, she's gonna to start to think, you know, shit, this guy's still texting, he's not booty calling me, he is legitimate, and we had a good interaction, my friends like him, my friends are telling me to go and see him, that's what actually manifests her to pack her handbag and to go and see you. That's how dating and phone numbers actually work. So, just keeping a track of my student over here, looking for, looking for approaches or coughs. Um, that's what happens. So one of the best texts that one of my students ever wrote, he's like, hey, we've been texting for 10 days now, but we've never actually met up. Let's make a time. And the girl's like, oh shit, yeah. So the thing that actually motivates a girl to, to be attracted to you is when she fears losing you, but she can only fear losing you if you've had a bit of back and forth for seven, maybe eight, 10 days, something like that. So when a girl is actually planning to do that first meeting with you, her thinking is, okay, this guy has been reasonable the entire time. He hasn't made any mistakes. I've told my friends about this guy and what happened with this guy. All other guys are generally being douchebags to me, booty calling me, not respecting me. I've asked my friends. My friends said I should go and see this guy. I, the, girl, the girl will feel like if she doesn't finally go and take some action, she's going to lose you and she's going to lose your good attention to another girl. It's that motivating factor that actually makes her go and date you. And that motivating factor can take about seven or eight to 10 days before she's gonna realize that and think, oh damn, if I don't pack up my handbag and agree to go and see this guy for a tapas and casual drinks on a week, like a Thursday evening, I'm gonna lose this lead and I really don't wanna lose this lead. So the date itself is easy enough. We'll talk about that in a different blog, but that's text game. So what are some things to remember? Avoid statements, be patient, don't text before 1 p.m. Uh, don't ask too many questions. Only one point per text. Keep it simple. Uh, warm invitations, then hard invitations. That's what I was gonna say, is that it's good to ask a couple of warm invitations, the kind of invitations where she doesn't have to say yes or no, but you can say, oh, I can't make it, but you have fun. Hard invitations come after the warm invitations don't work, and you say, hey, we've been texting for a while now, uh, let's make a time. I, I know a cool place, I wanna go and check it out. It's in our kind of mutual area. Um, it's super low key and you may need to persist a little bit, but that's good. People feel valued when they are, when, when people make a fuss for them. So that's the framework. What I need to know, if you work with me on Mastermind, you can send me the, your text messages and give me the backstory. What I need to know is I need to know about you, I need to know about the girl, I need to know about the circumstances of how you met, I need to know what your game plan is, what the logistical constraints are. Is she leaving soon? Do you live a long way away? Do you know her friends? Blah, blah, blah. And then I can coach text game really, really well. Even then, still takes seven to 10 days. So, Alex from the Four Week Natural, vlogging from lovely Melbourne over here. Uh, my Europeans, my Americans, I'm coming back. I can't wait, I'm gonna be coming back pretty soon. A whole summer in Croatia, only nine students per program and all the valuable time with me. And the thing that I can't advertise in the program, and as we have the guys here, is all the students who sign up on Four Week Natural are both ambitious, adventurous, and humble. They're willing to learn, they're self-made men, 
they're willing to risk all kind of adventures and they're willing to learn from somebody else. So when you get a group of like between six and nine guys together who are like that, it's mayhem. And last night my guys were out until 9 a.m. One of the guys was out until 10 a.m. And these guys are hooking up with girls, pulling girls home back to their place, bouncing to different clubs, making out with three girls in the night. And that they come to me in the morning frazzled and exhausted and they're like, Oh my God, Alex, I never knew this was possible. What have you done to me? This is amazing. Oh my, and they're texting in the group chat all night like, oh my God, I love the guys in this group. And this is weekend four of five and they're like a, a well-trained pack of velociraptors. Incidental approaching, buying drinks, sexy girl dance timing, dancing on the floor, front door ruling, jumping into cars, having kebabs, winging. It's, it's brilliant. And it's, it's a beautiful thing and it happens every month and it could be your story as well. So if you learn something here, give us a thumbs up. First time here, make sure you subscribe. And if you have any questions, write them in the comments below. What are your biggest issues with texting? What traps do you always fall into? And I'll get on my little keyboard and write you an answer because this is my job. I love doing it and I can't wait to write to you. Alex from The 4 Week Natural, see you soon.